Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Welcome to the Better Business, Better Series podcast. I'm Will Johnson. On today's show, we're talking about the role of women in today's workplace with an expert on the topic, Joanna Croats. As a national magazine editor, journalist, author, and online small business columnist, she's interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs over the years, and she has a very unique and eye-opening perspective on how women can truly impact the success of a business. She is also the author of Being Equal Doesn't Mean Being the Same, Why Behaving Like a Girl Can Change Your Life and Grow Your Business. Joanna, thanks for uh, joining us here today. You're welcome. I'm delighted to be here. You can tell that my book title is a tad provocative. So yeah, I'm no, sure. we're, well, we like that, and uh, we're going to get into all of it, I hope. Uh, jo- so let's start with the big picture. We've heard endlessly, uh, a lot of us, that women's pay, parity, and power consistently lags behind that of men's in the workplace. Recent studies show the gap uh, has actually been widening after a long period of progress. So is there any actual cost for men or for business generally in women's status and, and a lower status here if, if we believe these uh, reports and does women's lack of progress lately have any significant impact on entrepreneurship or small business needs and performance? So a lot to jump into there with. Yeah, it's pretty chewy. I I'd like to focus on <clears throat> sorry I I'd like to focus on the business side of it in, in terms of small business. I mean, there's a much larger social context and activist. I would like to see the Equal Pay Amendment pass, but that's not really our concern right now. So certainly I'm an advocate for women's rights, but what I see happening in the last half decade, perhaps, maybe less, is a pivot from all this kumbaya stuff that women deserve better and women should be in the forefront and women are educated now to an absolute economic argument. Um, We've heard both domestically that the uh, GDP, the national economy, would lift, some say, as much as 6%. If women were given equal pay for equal work, which, by the way, itself is a weird sort of concept because I don't know how anyone measures that. But but in addition, just around the world, we have something called uh, the third billion index, which is that if women globally were paid uh, at commensurate rates as men, it would increase the world economy as much as, say, China or India, the third billion index. And what happens is, I think, is that women leave the corporate workforce at a level that's when they are most effective. So midlife, when they have kids, mid-career, when they're skilled, and they just do not have enough flexibility or they just don't want to put up with what they've been putting up with. Um, Most of that equal pay for equal work, by the way, has to do with time. It's not just dollars per hour. It's that in a law firm, for instance, if you put in 50 hours a week as opposed to 40 hours a week, which women usually cannot do because of family and other concerns, that 10 extra hours is incredibly geometric in terms of salary. So that, both in the workforce and in entrepreneurship, where women are leaving, for instance, STEM uh, industry, science, technology, engineering, mathematic fields at the rate of 45% at mid-career. Whew. So let me let me back up then. So you're saying they're leaving uh, of their own choice. They're not seeing the advances they want, or they have too many family demands, or they're having kids. Uh, what's, what's going on there? I think it's a combination of everything. I think um, flexibility is the, is the key word to talk about. I'd rather um, make maybe 5000 to 10000 less a year and have time with my kids. I would like not to be sexually harassed, which happens all the time in the tech industry, and now we see in broadcast too. I don't want to have to keep proving myself over and over again. I come from the corporate world. I was a magazine editor for a few decades, and I just know that when a woman speaks up, it does not carry the weight as when a man speaks up. So all those things come together um, in what's often called second bias, second gen- gender bias, second generation bias. It's not so obvious or blatant, but it's absolutely there. And in terms of entrepreneurship, women would just rather have what I call Goldilocks businesses, just right size. I can manage it. I have a good income, but I'm not going to become Mark Zuckerberg. So I know we, we had a thumbs up in the room when you mentioned making $5,000 less and being able to spend more time with your family <laughs> well, um, most, from, from a by woman. By the way, that men are saying that too, especially right. in Gen Y. So you mentioned men. So women are actually wired differently from men, right? Or so I hear. that, And that can play an important 
role in the business world. From what you have learned uh, from your research, from studying uh, what's out there, let's talk about brain science and also sex hormones. What are the ways women differ from men? And on the flip side, men are wired in ways that women are not. What are some of the ways men are different? So again, we're talking, we're, we're putting this all in sort of the, the business uh, bundle. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to get into the bedroom, <laughs> at, at least not it's at It's not juncture. the right place. Not at this juncture, or even the dining room. Um, I think that uh, the research that I've investigated and uncovered is really only five, eight years old. Um, some of it was done about 2002, about estrogen, the rest after that. And one of the most salient um, parts of that is that People have discovered that, men, researchers have discovered that men's and women's brains are different. So mostly what happens is men have larger brains because they have a larger musculature, so, so not more, more smarts, but simply they're running more stuff in their body. They need a bigger volume. They're bigger people. But women have more nerve endings in what's called the corpus callosum. That is the, the set of nerve fibers that divide the right brain from the left brain, left brain being abstract, right brain being intuitive and visual. Left brain tends to be dominant in men, hence men tend to be better at math and abstract thinking, and they don't really need directions when they drive because they can figure out where they are in the landscape and have this kind of uh, 20, 40 feet up look at what's going on because of that abstract analysis. Women, however, transfer information back and forth with lightning speed much faster than men do. So women are, quote, more intuitive because they'll pick up body language, they'll pick up nonverbal context, they will find something that's articulate, that's about language, transfer it to nonverbal and back again before you can blink. Men do not have, typically do not have that ability. And so women are really great at multitasking. Men, not so much. Men are really good at top-down focus. Women, not so much. Again, this is what I call, what I, what I like to talk about, it called the Miranda warning. I mean, nobody is 100% male or female. We're all on a continuum. So there's personality, there's genetics, there's socializing, uh, socialization. But these have generally been proven by research. And other things about uh, testosterone leading to more risk-taking, estrogen leading to more calm during stress levels. Um, and all this research has come out in the last decade or so. So maybe in like a perfect world, you think, as in perhaps some relationships, that y y you might balance one another out in business. There's risk taking going on with men and certainly with women, too. But if we look at the brain science behind it, there may be more with men and more calm focus with women. And also nature. I mean, women yeah. are trained, socially trained, to be interested in relationships, to be more careful about getting people to like them in they're competitive, but in different kind of style than men. And the other part of this is that nothing is really about substance. It's all about style. So women and men can be as smart. Women and men can be as good at management. It just has to do with the style in which they do things. And that means that women will manage, and for instance, in a very different way, more collaborative, more consensual. Men tend to reward risk. And if you do well, I'll give you more information and more money. Women are more likely to make a team, actually, and that's contrary to so much we hear about all the men being good at teams on the sports fields, but not so much in business. Fascinating. You know, anytime we can talk about business and mention the corpus callosum, I think we've got a cool, <laughs> an interesting topic going on. So how do these uh, nature-nurture differences play out in business? Um, it, it, let's assume, as, as you've pointed out, that this brain science is certainly real. There are differences. How does it play out? Right. Well, first of all, the, the, as I said, in terms of management, for instance, um, in sales, say, uh, women are more likely to be interested in pulling as opposed to pushing. So what I mean by that from the tech world is men will say, here's my product. You need it. It does great. Here's the price. Women will say, typically, again, not every man, not every woman, generally speaking, well, what are your needs? What's your problem? What can I do to help you do better business? So they tend to be better at sales. Um, women, though, in sales tend not to hear no. They just keep trying to get the business. Men will cut bait when things are not working so well, um, and they're willing to move on. In addition, for communications, again, uh, women will be better at listening. Men uh, tend to make decisions based on information that's not complete. 
it's um, women will ask questions, which can be very annoying and sometimes add value. You know, none of this is 100% perfect. It's just differences in style. So let me, that leads me into thinking about this next question, and, and that is having to do with the consequences of what we might call being gender blind, deaf, and dumb. I, I have this feeling that some people might be scared off by this idea of our brains and, and the way we think between men and women being different, but there are, are, are potential consequences to actually refusing to accept and explore the differences between men and women, and business leaders can potentially hurt their success. No, for sure. Um, well, think about the innovation that women can bring to a party that we're losing, say those women leaving the STEM fields or the women who are starting a business. And by the way, 85% of women startups never have employees. I mean, it's shocking to me. And there's something about that that means it's a lifestyle choice, not just, and a lack of access to funding, of course. But it's just, I'm not necessarily interested in conquering the world. I'm interested in having a balanced life. And women will tend to go to Machu Picchu as well as have a business. So I think men are missing that, you know. It's, again, that top-down focus. So they're going to be 24-7 in the business. Funders think if a woman is not dedicated to giving up her whole life to the business, she can't actually be really good at it. And we're missing that sense of, um, I guess, wholesomeness. And you take breaks and you have a different kind of, business, which means your employees are happier. And I would think that that would grow the business in a better way than the male, the typically male way of doing things. Women also tend to see opportunities in business startups that um, men don't. As one example, there's Spanx, right, which is a billion-dollar business that Sarah Blakely started that has um, help for women in um, padding their, keeping their bodies tight, a kind of wonderful girdle, fashion-forward girdle. And, and for men, I believe now. And for men. And she could not get funding, by the way. So it, she la launched in Atlanta, I think it was about 2010 or so, 2009. And um, she would have to go into the ladies' room with a buyer at a department store and show the women buyers what it did. <laughs> and she could not get any investment. She couldn't get any VC money to back her. And that's because men don't care <laughs> about that. They don't see, you know, it's not a widget. It's not going to scale. I don't, I don't want a consumer business. But, of course, consumer businesses do scale. And um, and even other kinds of, of service businesses, um, service businesses do, also that women tend to start, have, there's so, much, so many hours in a day. As a result, um, venture capitalists and other investors say, well, you're capped, you know. So if there's 24 hours in a day, it means you can't scale to get my money out as a funder. So, Joanna, I, I hate to I hate to stop you. I, uh, we could. It's a topic that I feel like we could we could really go into for no, hours. No, absolutely. I tend to I tend to go on. No, no, and 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 I and I wish we had all the time in the world. Uh, I mean, it, it gets into sort of the, the the whole idea of the patriarchy in society, right? And and, and how that lends itself and, and shows up in the business world. Um, I don't know. It's not a word I'm using, but okay. um, but I do think there are places where. Um, we need to learn from each other. Yeah. I mean, women, women, it's not like I am, women hear me roar. I think they, women have weaknesses as well. It's a question of, of um, complementing each other's strengths. Recognizing what's there. So as a takeaway, what advice do you have to offer business owners from what you call the gender toolbox or sex-based advice for more gender-aware and smarter business? Yeah, I think, um, um, as I've indicated, uh, as we were talking, in terms of leadership and team building, you know, if, if the male would dial it down a little bit, let employees come forward, let employees make a mistake, which men don't usually like to see, they would grow the business in a much more advantageous way. Mm -hmm. If women didn't care so much about the relationship and they were more careful about setting benchmarks and exacting performance, then they would grow the business in a better way. So that's learning from each other. In terms of risk-taking, men will take a flyer way more quickly and sometimes to the detriment of the business, and women tend not to be so good about taking a risk. Again, there's that there's that middle ground. So they'd learn from each other, and there would be some sense of, I guess it's um, learning about what each each can do for the other. And then, as I mentioned before, listening to customers and finding out what the customer needs, as opposed to deciding I have the you know the next great widget for the world. Joanna, this is, I mean, it's its really interesting stuff. As you said, it's very chewy. Uh, and the takeaway, as, as we've discussed, hopefully, is that people can understand that these differences are real. They are there, and we can learn from each other. Well, the one, the one last tidbit, if I have just 50 seconds. Absolutely. Is 
that I did not get to is that there has also been extraordinary research that shows when women are in power, when women may have decision-making um, power at a business, the profit goes up. I mm. mean, substantially goes up. So really? women, Yeah. And there's study after study after study that says that from the IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund, from McKinsey and Company. I mean, major substantive um, surveys and researchers say put women in decision-making and you will make more money. Well, so not that I should be surprised by that, but it certainly underscores the need for business owners and, and leaders to, to recognize this and understand it. Yeah, absolutely. When it, when it affects the bottom line. Thanks to journalist, author, and small business columnist Joanna Croats for talking to us today. Joanna also has a podcast. You can look on iTunes, search for The Woman's Playbook, or on her website, womansplaybook.com. If you'd like to learn more about the Better Business Bureau, visit us at bbb.org. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.